In this video, we will talk about the split criteria used to determine the best split in a tree node. As mentioned in the previous video, there are different criteria. For classification, the main criteria are the impurity measurements. For regression, it's the variance or the spread of the points in each node or bin. Let's get into them one by one. Impurity measures or coefficients are used for classification and they measure how pure a node is. Here is an example for both binary and multi-class classification. On the left side, you see pure nodes, nodes that contain only one class without any mixing with the other classes. In the middle, you can see nodes that are less pure. They have a majority of one class, here are the yellow balls, but still have a little bit of other classes in them as well. On the right, you see the most impure nodes. They are equally mixed between the different classes. The misclassification error gives us the proportion of observations we get wrong if we classify according to the majority. Mathematically, we can write it like this. When we estimate PC as the number of class C observation in the node divided by the total number of observations in the node. For binary classification, we get that this is equal to one minus max P and one minus P, the graph of which you can see here. We can see that for this measure, the impurity is highest when p is equal to half, meaning there is a tie, and goes down linearly on both sides if one class is more than the other. The misclassification is not so good for splitting. Let's see why. Suppose we have a node with equal number of observations in both classes. We find one split that creates the following two nodes on the left, and another split that creates the following two nodes on the right. Which one is better? Which one should we choose? We calculate the weighted misclassification error for both and find out that it's the same. On the left, there are half the observation that went to the left node, and the misclassification error there is 0.25, and on the right node, it's the same. For the right split, we have three quarters of the observations going to the left node, and the misclassification there is a third. One quarter of the observation goes to the right node, and there is zero misclassification there. So we see that the misclassification is agnostic to these different splits. But we would prefer the right split. Why? Because in the right split, we created a pure node, a node that we don't need to split again. We will only need to continue splitting the left node. In the other case, we will have to continue splitting both nodes. So what do we use instead? There are two options, the Gini coefficient or the entropy. The Gini is defined like this it is generally faster to compute than the entropy. Here you can see the graph for the binary case. Notice that it's an upside down parabola reaching maximal impurity at 0.5, but notice the nonlinear way the graph goes down from it. We see that a reduction of P by 0.1 from 0.5 to 0.4 does not translate to a big reduction in impurity, but the reduction from 0.2 to 0.1 does translate to a big reduction. This means we care more about making nodes completely pure than making them a bit more pure. In the example before, the right split will have overall less impurity after, going down from 0.5 to 0.333 as opposed to 0.375. The entropy is defined like this. It is sometimes a bit better than the Gini, creating trees that are a bit more accurate or fit the data a bit better, but the difference is usually not that substantial and it's usually a bit slower due to the need to compute the log. In the binary case, this is reduced to this, and you can see from the graph that it's very similar to the Gini. Here you can see a graph of all three of these impurity measures together, where we also normalize them to have a maximum of one. You can see the Gini and the entropy are quite close to each other, the Gini being a bit steeper around 0.5, and the entropy a bit steeper around the zero and one. Let's move on to regression. The two main criteria used here are the squared error, or the L2 error, and the absolute, or L1 error. Both are measures of the overall dispersion in the data, but different loss functions give rise to different optimums. The value that minimizes the squared error is the mean, and the value that minimizes the absolute error is the median. As such, if we choose to use the squared error, we should set every terminal node to the mean of the Y values in that node. And if we choose the absolute error, we should set every terminal node to the median. The resulting regression lines might be different, as shown here by the simplified graph, where red is the mean and green is the median. 
Finally, another conceptual way to split which works for both classification and regression is the deviance. Deviance is the generalization of RSS, the residual sum of squares, to all kinds of distributions. I won't get into the concept of deviance here. I have a video that explains it in the context of GLMs, which I will link to this video. The main point is that we assume some probabilistic model. That is, we assume the data is coming from some probability, whose parameters are different between nodes. This is conceptually different from the machine learning approach of simply finding what works the best, but it is actually equivalent to it in the cases shown here. For classification, we can use the binomial or multinomial distribution and get this. This looks a lot like the entropy, and it is actually equivalent to it for the splitting. It is also called log loss in the sklearn package. For regression, we can assume the normal distribution with a variance of one and get the squared loss, which is what we've seen before. Deviance is useful if we want to assume other distributions on the data. For example, if we assume our data comes from a Poisson distribution, but I won't get into this in this video. A useful concept that can help us with the implementation of trees is the information game. We subtract the criteria before and after the split, after being weighted by the proportion of observation that went to each node. M here is the metric we measured before the split. WL is the proportion of observation going to the left node. ML is the metric of the left node. And likewise, WR and MR are for the right nodes. So instead of looking for a split that minimizes the metric, we look for a split that maximizes the information gain. This is not strictly needed, but as we shall see, can help with the implementation. In the example given before, if we calculate the information gained by this split, we get that before the genie is 0.5, because p is 0.5, the genie for the left node is 4 ninths, because p is equal to a third, and for the right it's 0, because p is equal to 0. And putting it all together, we find that this split gave us an information gain of 0.1667. Now that we know to actually measure how good a split is, how do we find the best split? Well, nothing ingenious here. We use brute force search. We go over each feature, and for each feature, we test all possible cutoff values and make a split there. We measure the information gain from every such split. Here's an excerpt from a code implementation in Python that does exactly that. Go over each feature, extract the possible cutoff values from that feature, and go over each value to make a split there. Once we have the information gain for all the splits, we can choose the split with the most information gain and do the actual split there. Some questions that arise are, when do we stop splitting? How do we handle categorical variables? How do we handle missing data, etc. We will talk more about this in the next video. But this is all for this video. See you in the next one.